Are you in the final phase of your research and need to know how to write a discussion chapter? Don't panic. In this video you will find everything you need to know to write an exceptionally good discussion and reflect on your results on a high level. I'm going to reveal to you the five essential components your discussion chapter needs to have in order to convince an academic audience of the value of your results. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib. If the results are the heart of your academic paper or dissertation, then the discussion is the lungs. Without it, your findings would simply run out of breath. Writing a discussion is absolutely essential for any dissertation and most research papers. By writing a discussion chapter, you give meaning to your study. The evaluation of your whole study largely depends on how you evaluate, classify and reflect your own results in relation to previous work. In this context, the results can stem from an empirical study or a literature review. I cannot emphasize enough how important the discussion is. It's extremely important. And now I'll show you how to write one. Component number one. Summarize your findings. On your quest to learn how to write a discussion chapter, you need a clear outline or structure to follow. The discussion is perhaps the most important chapter of the entire study, so you shouldn't leave anything to chance. The following tip is worth its weight in gold for structuring your discussion. And it's simply to convert your research questions into subheadings. Your discussion primarily focuses on answering your previously formulated research questions to the greatest extent possible. If you have only one question, the approach of converting it to a subheading may not work as effectively unless it contains multiple sub-aspects. However, this structure is highly suitable when you have two or more research questions. Another option for quantitative studies is to, instead of using research questions, using the hypotheses as the structuring elements of your first two to three paragraphs of the discussion. Component number two, interpret your findings. The simplest way at this point is to scan through the results section of your study from beginning to end and provide your own interpretation for each finding in relation to existing literature. For empirical studies, you can think about the following. For example, if the influence of variable A on variable B is statistically significant, the results section will simply state that this is the case. Usually this is presented in the form of tables and figures, accompanied by some descriptive text of yours. In the discussion, you are now allowed to assess what it actually means for a significant effect to exist in this context. The same principle applies to the results of qualitative studies. Ask yourself, what do your findings add to existing literature? How are your results different from results other researchers have found? And how does this affect an existing debate in your field of study? For literature-based studies, you can ask yourself the following questions. Did your review reveal that certain niches within the field have not been covered? Or what does the research focus on and which aspects does it neglect? Discuss the contents of the literature you analyzed. Reflect on a meta level on the themes, assumptions, gaps or contradictions you have found and what it means in terms of answering the research question or questions. Component 3. Explain your theoretical contributions. If you work with theory, which I hope, the next step in your discussion is to relate your theoretical interpretation to existing theory. The good news is that you have already covered existing theory in the front end of your study. This means that you don't need to find new references here. An exception for this are grounded theory studies, in which you do not have a theoretical background, but introduce existing theory for the first time in the discussion. But for most other studies, you can stick to the rule not to introduce new theory or authors in the discussion chapter. 
The simplest approach is to compare your background chapter with your results and write down how both relate to each other. Consider the following question. What do my results contribute to theory? Have a look at the paper authored by management scientist Albert Wetton, which defines what can constitute a theoretical contribution. Did you introduce new theoretical concepts, a new model? Did you transfer an existing theory to a new context? Or did you shift the boundaries of an existing theory? Have you tested new theoretical relationships? Or maybe have you discovered a new theoretical mechanism? Read Wetton's paper if you have no idea about the things I just mentioned. Component number four. Explain your practical contributions. Studies that have relevance to industry can optionally include a section or subsection that highlights practical implications. This refers to what the results actually mean for the world out there. You can incorporate it into the discussion or treat it as a separate subsection. In economics, practical implications could be recommendations for management. In the healthcare sector, it could lead to implications for the design of processes in hospitals. Communication scholars could consider implications for media production or distribution. Mechanical engineers could explore application scenarios for industrial projects, and so on. Most disciplines can establish a connection to practical applications. However, every field has their own standards of what is expected in a discussion chapter. Review a handful of papers from your discipline and model the structure you find there. Before we get to the fifth and final component, please consider to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. This would help me out a lot. Essential component number five. Mention some limitations. While conducting your research, you will encounter various limitations. In your discussion chapter, you should reflect and explain which limitations you encountered and how they affect your results. Depending on the research project, possible limitations can refer to the chosen methodology or the reliability of the method may be compromised. Focus on limitations that were outside of your control to not become too critical with yourself. After all, you want to sell your study as important. Based on the explanation of the limitations, you can also derive recommendations for further research. You explain how your own results yield new questions or which questions remain unanswered. In some cases, the limitations and recommendations for future research can be found in the conclusion section of a paper or dissertation. But if you write more than a paragraph for each, I would recommend to position them in the discussion. This allows you to keep the conclusion short and sweet. Now let me give some final remarks about writing a discussion. The most important element of every discussion chapter is your study's contribution. If you do not convincingly sell your contributions, a reviewer may claim that your work is too descriptive and not important. To counteract this, you should invest a lot of time and brain power into writing this section of your discussion. If you want to write a discussion that leaves a lasting impression, demonstrate that you have engaged deeply with the literature and or theory. Use plenty of references. But not every sentence has to be supported by a reference. You should also craft your own arguments. It is important to stay close to the literature, but in a constant interplay with your own interpretations. One characteristic that sets outstanding discussion chapters apart from the average is the ability for critical reflection. Take a clear position and solidify your arguments by referring to other works. If you can do this, your results will get the discussion they deserve.